Welcome to Accuracy Third, the podcast where we talk about creeping fascism and how an apartheid political party in the United States embraced fascism and white supremacy to keep their apartheid power. I'm D-Day. I'm Rex. I'm Beth. But enough about the Borg. Let's talk about not having an event. <laughs> that was really good. Wow. That almost sounded rehearsed, uh, guys. <laughs> Boy, um, our audience is going to really have to tail off in expectations for the rest of this episode. Uh, seriously, the Borg, we love you. Um, please make sure the event happens next year. We can't give you any money. We're broke, Dick. Yeah, we are broke. And we really hope that those of you that are full-time employed there can remain employed. It is a shitty world out there and a lot of us are losing our work and and it's a really good thing that the government isn't uh, protecting us from eviction or anything like that any longer so mm. uh so well, good job going it alone see, everyone i don't know why that would be a problem in the bay area where there's you know <clears throat> it's, it's so known for its reasonable uh <laughs> ability to get places to live it turns out it's not going to be a problem in the bay area because all the people who could already afford rent here have decided why the fuck are we here during the pandemic rents are plummeting yeah so all the uh people who work in tech who are making a bunch of money are able to take ten thousand dollars so that they can leave the bay area and get paid uh, a massive amount of money somewhere else. Yay! Yeah, it, it turns out you don't actually need to go into the Facebook campus to wreak destruction on our norms and societal structures. I think the point is, <laughs> if you came here for some good news and to hang out with your happy accuracy third friends, this is what you're getting. <laughs> Sorry, not sorry. <laughs> nah, come on. We can do a little bit of Burning Man content. We had a bitty, bitty burn here. We did. We we had a, a burn that... An Adora burn. Yeah. Ugh. An Adora double burn. Um, uh, it was the first social gathering that any of us have really engaged in since... Your birthday. My <laughs> birthday party in March, at the beginning of March. Uh, we had maybe a dozen people... Socially distanced in the backyard as we burned a couple of couple of little men. Uh, you can see the burn on our YouTube channel if you want to watch. Did you guys hear about the Did do that after uh, at Vaz being uh, down on Ocean's Beach? Uh, yeah, I heard they did not uh, uh, behave too nicely. Vaz was fine. Oh, uh, that's that is actually that's. The copaganda that I got. The cops were upset at some burners. Yeah, I I mean, in general, whatever. The cops are going to be mad at burners, but Boz was handing out masks and was reminding people to social distance and was doing a dance party. I'm sorry, I love Boz. Good job, Boz. Yeah. I also love Boz. Yeah, it made me sad that we didn't go down there, but I think that that would have been even more depressing. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Uh, Have have I told my Boz story on the pod before i don't know but this is the podcast where we interview each other about burning man yeah well um <laughs> listeners if you've heard this before um well you're welcome uh <laughs> this was i want to say it was a, the last year that i did like a bad exodus just a long exodus Ugh. uh a long daytime exodus i was waiting in the exodus line i, I was a, a passenger in uh a uh, a friend's vehicle and we ended up in the line behind Boz, uh, and this this was like a 16, 18 hour exodus, so that line was going nowhere anytime soon. Uh, so my driver asked me to sit behind the wheel and shepherd the vehicle as he went up to Boz to get some. <laughs> All right, in Exodus, yes, good job, Boz. Yeah, that's legit. Um, that's the sort of fun we missed this year. The Borg. Oh yeah. Don't don't point that at the Borg. They didn't bring the China virus here. Um, yeah, we we, some we don't call it that, nor do we Just do that voice. Think of all the cute gay male sex we couldn't support into being. Yeah, it sucks. It does. Suck. Well, it actually it doesn't suck. It's lacking sucking. Ah. Yeah, but if you're both wearing gas masks, you can do other things as long as your heads are as far from each other as possible. <laughs> this is so. So what you're saying is is that that really only like like cowgirl with kind of a deep bend and then yeah. some N95s. That is what I'm saying. Yeah. Um. 
Eesh. I mean, that's got to be someone's kink. Sure. You... <laughs> hey, listen, all kinds of people have all sorts of variety in their anatomies and fit together in different ways. Uh huh. Sometimes maybe you could get some fucking in with your head's six feet apart. I just yeah. like, what way is your dick bent that reverse cowgirl works? Uh, I mean, uh, down? Like, uh, yeah. Down. Yeah, yeah. Like, Bent down. Yeah. Um, like, like Gonzo's nose. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like it when everybody's laughing at my dick on the podcast. <laughs> well, then stop relating your dick to a Muppet part. Seriously. Uh, I, pfft, look, man, I don't like, talk recognize about my dick like. bird beak. <laughs> um, so do you guys want to talk about our guided tour through virtual burn i mean i do but i want to back it up and uh double tap on my joke because the uh the real joke is i don't talk about my snuffleupagus trunk i don't talk about my snuffleupagus trunk my snuffleupagus trunk my snuffleupagus trunk i don't talk about my snuffleupagus trunk 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 i'm done (laughs) i was just i was like oh you're gonna go back to that joke there's no way this is gonna work (laughs) And then it didn't work so specifically that it was almost so funny. (laughs) I probably tried to do some real hot wire shit with what Rex just said. And uh, boy, that was funny, listeners, wasn't it? I was just thinking, so Snuffleupagus' trunk uh, has like its own, uh, uh, I don't know what you call the thing that is attached to the puppet that allows it to move. So its trunk Mm. has its own. um, Baton. Like yeah, stick. Like, control stick. Right, but Snuffleupagus's trunk is the the epitome of the problem with guys with two big dicks. It just sort of flops around. It just sort of like it can it moves in weird ways that don't necessarily make any kind of sense. Sure, because it's motivated by its tip rather than muscles along its length. <laughs> but it is prehensile. Just because it's pointed <laughs> down doesn't mean it's not strong, guys. It's strong. No, we, you're you're. you're Okay, let's move on talking and past all of our dicks. Um, Beth, we have not heard nearly enough about your dick, though. It's, it is really psychic. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> the psychic nubbin, that's what we call it. Uh, it's its kind of scary if you've ever seen the movie Scanners. <laughs> you do have to take some additional risks when going down on me. Cronenberg's <laughs> finest scanners, Beth's vagina. <laughs> Which is the name of this episode. (laughs) (laughs) Or we can go back to calling you Drunk Beth. No. (laughs) I'm a professional now. Stop it. (laughs) (laughs) Um, But did did we want to talk about our foray through the multiverse? Yeah, um, we could talk about that. Uh, Listeners, what you are... Uh, being robbed of is the audio experience of joining us and Pope on a tour of the various virtual burns. And you're being robbed of this because it uh, it doesn't sound good. So we're not going to share it with yeah. you. <laughs> there's, there's no real way to interestingly edit together Beth, Rex, and I sitting around two monitors watching Pope try to get us into and out of different virtual burns <laughs> with a whole bunch of lag and us being like, is, is this it? Wait, is, is that what it's supposed is to Is it like? supposed to stutter like that? Now, let me tell you what we as uh, semi-pro hobbyist podcasters do not have, and that is a computer system and robust enough internet connection to actually record ourselves and Pope remotely Doing a virtual burn experience over Zoom. Um, it did not work. It's not like it's <laughs> did not work. It, you know, as funny as some of it was, it is not worth listening to how sad we all are to be doing it. True. Um, but we went and we saw it, and I was like, man, a lot of people worked hard on that. Uh, I didn't enjoy any of it. Um, it made me depressed. Because I was like, yeah, that's a, that is a shallow, hollow simulacrum of something that is profoundly meaningful to me. That, that's, that's what it felt like. Uh, it, it, for me, as lovely as some of it was, and I did find some of it compelling What was the in one that looked sense? the most like Burning Man, the, the big virtual space? That, oh. I don't remember. Of all of them, one of them actually kind of looked like that one. We'll call it Eat Playa. The one that had a good-looking cafe in it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Minecraft? The Minecraft one was 
The Minecraft one was cute for what it was. I really hope that someone makes an art of the Minecraft art Mm -hmm. and puts it out at Burning Man. (laughs) Because the Minecraft art was shockingly intricate and kind of neat. And I also liked the presentation of the pen and ink one. Um, I did too. We didn't get much utility out of it. Uh, Well, we also weren't on with anyone else, but I do enjoy the ability to walk away from people talking to me. That feels like a solidly Burning Man experience. I don't know if you guys have ever done this on Playa. I highly recommend it. At some point, when someone has started a conversation with you that you no longer want to be in, just turn around fully and walk away. It is so satisfying. And it is very immediate, Mm -hmm. which is a thing that none of these spaces were. Uh, Right. They... uh, as lovely as I found them, they are all a mediated experience by their very nature. And, and so it, they, they just can't quite scratch that Burning Man itch. I mean, I think there's also the caveat that we should share with our listeners that we tried to do virtual Burning Mans on Sunday after the burn when a lot of things were deactivated and a lot of people weren't on. And on top of that, we were a little pod of assholes not really interacting with anyone which is um i think pretty emblematic of our general burning man experience we went to a burning man like we usually do no i well i mean maybe you guys did i didn't do any of the shouting at other people that i usually do well it's hard to do in virtual space yeah i mean you could type in all caps i do (laughs) always follow me on twitter (laughs) Where I'm not as funny as I am angry. Uh, listeners, if you had a different experience of the virtual burns, we'd love to hear about it because ours was uh, un anything. <laughs> uh, but we know that our experience is by no means universal. We have all heard and read about positive experiences. Even Pope, who was our tour guide, had some positive things to share about his experience going in solo. But we want to hear yours because this is a podcast where you share your Burning Man stories. So this is a podcast where you do the work, start doing the work. There'll be more podcasts. (laughs) This is a podcast where we share the work. It's a duocracy. So fucking do. Yeah, I'm doing it. So I think that the best thing about the time period where Burning Man would have happened being over is now I'm past it and feel some like excitement about going back someday. Although as we are entering into who the goddamn hell knows what, I don't know when. Yeah. But it <laughs> at at this point I I've transitioned from uh being depressed about there not being a Burning Man this year to not being able to imagine what the world could possibly be like after the November elections. And so having a hard time imagining Burning Man as part of that unimaginable potential hellscape. Yay. Yay. (laughs) I also now have a different job, which might mean that I can't manage to go. Uh Uh-huh. I'm really hoping that I can, I can do a workaround for it, but. Nah, we'll figure it out. Yeah. If you're teaching remotely, they can't tell you where you're teaching from right but i still need permission from my department and the the overall the dean's office to teach remotely if if we're not everyone teaching remotely Mm. um but whatever i i have yet (laughs) (laughs) i have yet to quit a job for burning man we'll see (laughs) oh you could always just like threaten to quit and make them acquiesce I mean, they really do need me, but yeah. but I think they would support me doing it. It's more of getting the dean's office in on it. Mm-hmm. Um, well, I can also tell them that I'm a piece of shit if I don't get a chance to renew my faith in humanity and communal Ooh. effort. I have become a very bad teacher. Yeah, take it as a mental health week. Yeah. <laughs> Word. It's just hard to do that on the first week of school. You know, for my mental health, I can't be doing the first or second week of school. <laughs> See, you guys. You can well, do I mean, you can be doing pre-week. Pre-week is almost Burning Man now. Yeah, I mean, I would I would skip the actual event and do setup long mm-hmm. before I would do it the other way around. Yep. Um, yeah, gives yeah. you some leeway. Yeah. Ugh. Okay. 
were we going to talk about nice things or is this just what you want to talk about your underwear or should we talk about my dream my underwear Ooh, listeners are you I... teased <laughs> no it's just it's a lot of talk about beth's junk and the vicinities <laughs> on this episode yeah undergarments and depression that's what we talk about on Accuracy Third. Oh. Um, no, I don't even know. This isn't a talking point. This is just how my life works, which is normally I buy all my new underwear for Burning Man, like new socks and new underwear. And I normally clean my room so that when I come home, I have a nice clean room that I come home to. And I did none of those things because I didn't go to Burning Man this year. And uh, that just means that, like, it took a couple of months to replace my three-year-old sports bras, and uh, and I have no socks. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm I'm in a, a similar boat. I I usually buy a, a big bunch of brand new underwear to take to Playa, um, but what happened for me is I now have way too many pairs of underwear because usually that. Uh, pre-purchase uh, before I make my underwear purchase I throw out all my old shitty underwear mm-hmm. and I just haven't done that this year so now I've got more shitty underwear in my underwear rotation than I normally would in October yeah yeah no I've also just decided all of my current underwear is period panties because I can't keep track um <laughs> <laughs> My new goal is to replace all my underwear with black underwear, because why didn't I do that, like, since I was 16? Uh, I did that at one point, but then I moved on to the, like, real fluorescent, real pink um, briefs, like, with white piping. Yeah. Um, Yeah, And I've still got from from my first year that I worked Burning Man, which was the first year that I was just like, well, what I'm doing is I'm wearing skirts, and I'm wearing real fancy bright underwear. I still have one pair of pink mantis and one pair of fluorescent lime lime green mantis um, from that year, like thirteen years ago. Oh, I one of my favorite the the year that uh, we all decided to start podcasting together was one of my favorite panty moments. I got a bunch of really bright lacy panties, and lacy panties are not great with playa. But I or period blood. No, and these ones were fluorescent orange yeah. and completely see through. And my period started, and I was in uh, the. That's how I know what your specific contours are like. <laughs> um, I was in the cafeteria. Fuck! Why am I forgetting the name? Commissary. I was in commissary, and I could just <laughs> tell. <laughs> Tell my period had started and I'm like I'm wearing these bright brand new completely see-through underwear and so I go out to the portos and I'm wearing like working boots and panties and and I'm sure a top of some variety and I take off my panties and most women know this you want to spit on bl- that blood stain to help it come out because the enzymes in your spit so I was standing there without panties on spitting into bloody panties when I uh, the person who thought the porto was empty because I hadn't locked it <laughs> threw the door open. And that's when I really felt like I'd truly become a volunteer. <laughs> what I'm saying is a year that we miss Burning Man is not a special year. <laughs> this year's pretty special. Uh, it's point like, taken. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, no, no arguments other. here. Yeah. Well, uh, <laughs> Uh, 2020, who knew? Futurama, apparently. And Robert Evans. Uh, <laughs> and uh, Star Trek. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Uh, canonically, in Star Trek, 2020 is the year that the world uh, descends into chaos. Um, well. Everything this, is cool. Just for everybody's information, I am not a Trekkie. I just absorb random data. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but he will be a Trekkie uh, for money or profit, mm-hmm. for for profit oh, or sex. Yes, one hundred percent. If you if you want to sponsor a uh, <laughs> deep dive into the uh, Star Trek series, uh, all three of us will do that for uh, what uh, eighty thousand dollars a year each. Uh, yeah, I would yeah, do it for a lot less. Yeah, no, just, I, just don't. Too, too, too many too many steps too quickly. The first thing we do is we get hashtag 
Trek for pay trending. <laughs> <laughs> and then we start doing an unedited uh, Trek reaction podcast, which we don't edit and we do react to. Accuracy third team. <laughs> the accuracy third team. Hashtag prostitutes. <laughs> Did you say prostitutes instead of podstitutes? Podstitutes. Pod, pod, it, it, it's uh, it is too goddamn early on a Sunday for any of us to be I pronouncing things beer? correctly. Podstitutes. Uh, yeah, Rex. Uh, Beth would like a beer. Yeah. It kind of works either way. <laughs> um, but do you guys? I know that in our last thing that we released, we talked a bit about our new podcast. Um, but uh, we're we're getting we're getting there. We're getting to a release date for our for the. Fun Killer Chronicle. Fun Killer Chronicle. Singular. Fun Killer Chronicle. For some reason. We have a logo. And uh, we wanted to share with you the coolest thing about the podcast podcast thus far. Certainly the coolest thing that we didn't do ourselves. And I'm so and proud for this thing we didn't do ourselves. Thing. Yeah. This is this is just uh, wonderful. We collaborated. We collaborated. We asked a very talented person to make us a theme song, and we want to put it here so you can hear how much fun we're having talking about something that isn't as depressing as Burning Man. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, at parts. Um, there's much less child abuse at Burning Man than there is in the King Killer Chronicle. That you know of. Granted, there are no 12-year-olds concussioned up. That you know of. That you know of. It is certainly centered in the narrative less. We can't goddamn make anything light and airy, can we? Yeah, well, this is just a reminder that if you want to uh, hear more content from us, start reading The King Killer Chronicle. It's really fun. Um, the audiobook is really good. You simply won't regret it. Yeah. It's by Patrick Rothfuss. Rothfuss. Two of us can pronounce his name. Patty Rots. Yeah, and uh, one of us is editing one hell of a podcast, so... Music. Old iron, clean fire, and the holy name of God. Do you want to know the name? The name of the wind. Gather round, listen. You get your. Your answers by the end, by the end, King Killer, King Killer, King Killer, King Killer. We totally don't deserve that, do we? I, I think we absolutely deserve that, as incredible as that piece of music is. And, um, oh my God. Uh, the rest of the podcast is nearly as charming. We're actually <laughs> making a, a, a really lovely thing, and I'm pretty proud of it. So, um, listeners, uh, get your read on. It's a quarantine. What else are you doing? Read some fantasy. Yeah. yeah if somebody is... needs to borrow my Kindle, give me a shout. You can borrow my Kindle. Trust, and... trust these assholes. We have good taste. We picked this because it was something that wasn't depressing we could all focus on. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's only depressing in, like, the first act. Yeah, yeah. and there's no novelization of Speed Racer, so uh, <laughs> we're, we're critiquing and analyzing this series of books instead. All right, well, back to what our podcast is nominally about at this point. I had a Burning Man dream, you guys. Did you? I did. Oh, my God, it was amazing. Um, it was in, like... A flooded city. Um, it was like you know, flooded like all the way underwater, or flooded like to the knees. Flooded. Um, flooded like half of the first story of a building. Uh huh. Um, and definitely a very tropical place. I spent some time in New Orleans. I love New Orleans. Um, I've only been back once since Katrina, but I spent some time there uh, before then, and. It was a very festive, like, boaty, floaty time. Hmm. Um, it reminded me a bit of, uh, like, the several mile long uh, um, float and booze tubing experiences I've had uh, at resorts my folks uh, took me to when I was a teen. And uh, just 
even in my dream, having the like feeling of having to move around this space physically and exert myself to get to the different interesting zones that exist in uh, in Burning Man's and regionals and those sorts of hippie parties. I feel like I've had a uh, Burning Man in a Venice dream myself that that really fits. I know I've had um, Burning Man on a pier, which is weird because mm-hmm. I haven't spent a lot of time on piers. Um, well, we went to that great party in the... We went to that party in the... Wait, it's not a... We went to that experience on that... Uh... That giant military ship. Uh huh. Boy, was that intense. It it was. We got totally lost. This was actually kind of fun. I'm pretty sure we broke into a part of the ship we weren't supposed to get into. <laughs> oh, I we, am 100. percent We were just certain. walking around in that like quarter mile of empty, dark, be- like rooms where there used to be bunks. Well, the interesting thing about it is you can tell it's run by one of those organizations that is entirely staffed by like volunteers yeah well, vets. El- elderly veteran volunteers mm-hmm. who who aren't thinking about the fact that we all have high intensity flashlights on us at all times in our phones ordinarily you can turn off the lights and close a door to a space in a gigantic military vessel like this and like folks of their generation and maybe even a generation younger wouldn't think about taking their phone out and being like, well, what's behind this door? Well, also, we're the kind of assholes that just start flipping switches. And they're, the, the lights still work if you figure out where they turn <laughs> on. Mm-hmm. Like, I I feel like what they just, what these kind-hearted vets did not understand is they were going to have a bunch of kids running around in tiny clothing trying all the door handles. <laughs> uh, and frankly, as as much fun as people seem to be having dancing at their experience and at their experience being in that strange steel floored cuddle puddle uh <laughs> i was digging. never enough fluff at the party <laughs> why is it like not even most sex parties have enough fluff but at least sometimes at some sex parties there's enough fluff this this was a big steel fucking metal boat and there was maybe 10 feet by 10 feet that was covered in things you could cuddle Rent on some fucking uh, pillows and, and futons by things you can cuddle on uh, beth means some comforters yeah <laughs> and like a couch cushion pushed against the, the speakers you were also in front of the speakers and that and, and that one guy who wanted to pet my belly well he, we could have cuddled on him he can, wanted to pet you, all our can bellies. you blame the jojo <laughs> jojo <laughs> <laughs> Guys, if you've ever if you've never had an adult male seriously ask you if it was okay to pet your belly because Earnestly. Uh, because other people were petting your belly. And I'm like, you mean people my boyfriend? Who you know. <laughs> like, <laughs> Why intimate partners? Yes. <laughs> hey, 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 hey. <laughs> What you two are doing looks pretty good. Can <laughs> can, can I get some of that? that? Can, can you got space for a JoJo? I want. <laughs> but as as non party like of a uh, non party as it was, uh, I was really having much more fun being inside an aircraft carrier in spaces that were completely unoccupied by people who had cautioned me not to do things. I do like the entire. Uh, Bay Area party culture that is run by folks who who Burning Man real hard when Burning Man was a new thing and then burnt out by generation two or three Burning Man Uh and started their own splinter um, party not party cultures around the Bay Area to do uh, real interesting like small bore Burning Man style adjacent cacophony events. Yeah and also um Things on aircraft carriers. Mm-hmm. Yeah, y'all got to go to the woods with me sometime, and y'all got to go to the hotel with me sometime. Um, sure, if we ever get to leave our house for social things. Some time. <sighs> After Corona 3, maybe. And many more. <laughs> <laughs> the great thing is burners are all already well adapted to having masks on them. <sighs> This was the perfect virus for us. I just, like... Do you wonder why we're not doing a lot of content anymore, listeners? Yeah, it's because it's so goddamn depressing. It's like, 
looking at the background on the computer that we record this on to, which is a giant aerial view of of Burning Man, uh, it just m- makes me sad. You got to make your own Burning Man. No, man. it's just like <laughs> it's one thing to be like, hey, the big event isn't happening. Go find some regionals that you like. It's another thing to be like, no, you don't get to meet any new people. You don't get to touch other human beings. You, I hope you really like your lovers and partners and friends that you share homes with, because that's it. Um, uh, hey, hey, listener people, is your regional happening this year and before the actual burn and reasonable for people on the West Coast to get to? Hit us up. Yes, Kiwi Burn is happening this year. Desperate. No. They still are not accepting our passports. <laughs> yeah, no international We're travel the best. accepted. We're the best. Really? We're the best. I'm going to say this side of the Mississippi only. I mean, we are very good at dying of coronavirus. Mm-hmm. And so we're is doing, California. We're, we're not killing exempt. It. Yeah, we're yeah. a bunch of dumb shits too. Hashtag, we're all dumb shits. Hashtag, Trek for pay. <laughs> we'll talk to you in a couple weeks. Prostitutes. Um. <laughs> Prostitutes. 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 Do we want to? <laughs> Why? <laughs> Where does prostitutes even come from? Prod. Prostitutes. Podstitutes. Pod. 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 Podstitutes. Podstitutes. Um. Which is to say, if you have a podcast you want us to make, we will do so for money. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> if we would have the whole time. Oh, my God. If if you're so rich that you could uh, fund us for a podcast, but you haven't wanted to fund us for this podcast because it's not quite what you want to pay for, hey, hit us up. Mm-hmm. We make good material. Yeah. We need, Sometimes. We need no more than $150,000 a year to be full-time podcasters. So whoever has that sort of money, give us 25% more than that, and Is we that won't right? have that to come back to ball. you. I mean, it's more money than I make now. That's for all three of us. Right. Divided in three, I'm that's more rid of money. My job? <laughs> this isn't the sort of conversation we have on the podcast. Like, this has to be entirely beeped out for our audience. Okay, edit this out. And by that, I mean don't edit this out. We need 300,000. 300,000 will get you twice weekly. <laughs> um, Any topic you like. Do we have other things that we actually want to talk about? We miss our friends. We miss our uh, the only place where I actually like people. Oh man, guys, it hurts to not have this this thing that renews my faith in humanity. It does. It um, really like hurts. <laughs> Do you remember the, the, there's this thing that happens every year right when I get there when I am shocked by the fact that everyone is making eye contact and it feels very weird to me and it takes me a long time to be like, right, this isn't aggression. This isn't like... <laughs> <laughs> this person is not about to try and scam me. Yeah, like I can look strangers in the eye and smile at them and it all is very nice. And I and then I come back to San Francisco and it takes me a couple of weeks to stop looking people in the eye because uh, it, it, we're Californians. That's considered aggressive. Um, so Everybody's you- not giving me aggressive eye contact at Burning Man? Um. Let's revisit this in your learning how to read people's sessions. <laughs> Thought that was like one of the most contentious places on earth. <laughs> Jesus Christ! Uh, it it's been um, such uh, like a challenging emotional space for me that I have all of the Burning Man live episodes downloaded, and I I, I just can't even bring myself to start. Oh yeah. Listeners, are you listening to that? I can't be bothered. Tell us about it. Yeah. <laughs> I, we'll talk about your impressions of another podcast on this podcast. <laughs> I mean, I, I listen, We're doing another podcast. Please I, enjoy this podcast. <laughs> I listen to one of them. They're, uh, they're, they're doing a great job. I just... Um, it's so hard to engage with Burning Man material right now. It's, right? I can't listen to our podcast. Why would I listen <laughs> to someone else's? I have to listen to our podcast many more times because of it. Um, other thoughts, feelings? Uh, everyone's welcome to join me on this cross. <laughs> you would you? <laughs> <sighs> um, good night. Like and subscribe. Uh, 
check out Fun Killer Chronicle, which is coming out very soon. Um, by very soon, I mean almost certainly this year. Uh, <laughs> yeah, well before Thanksgiving, unless. And we will uh, release with a whole bunch of content right out the gate. Don't so, tell um, them shit. <laughs> These are these are the herd. The herd can hear. Yeah, we're gonna try and release uh, a bunch of content at once so that people can spend a bunch of time investing in it before it slows down. In how <laughs> often we're releasing things. Um, yeah, Read. they know. <laughs> <laughs> they do know. Who knows better than them? Uh, if you uh, haven't read it, read the King Killer Chronicle. Read Name of the Wind. Mm-hmm. It's really good. It's really good. And you'll, send us letters and stories and your impressions of things, and we'll read them. Or send us more attack questions. Why, we haven't screamed at each other in the studio for months. In the studio. <laughs> there's there's at least a couple in the inbox. One of us should really be. Great. In that inbox more. Somebody should manage that inbox. Yes. Um, were we supposed do to Do you hang need out with a this? thing to do? Were we supposed to hang be hanging out with Zeno at some point? Uh, we might do that next weekend. Maybe. Yeah, it was going to be this weekend, but we shouldn't barbecue and add carbon to the air. Uh, oh, God. In hindsight, getting that smoker at the beginning of the pandemic, <laughs> real bad idea. <laughs> how how were you to know that the pandemic was going to blossom into uh, um, ecocide by evil anti-fascists? Oh, dude, I knew. I knew you, that, and earthquake were also a possibility, and mudslides. Oh, we were supposed to have an earthquake this weekend. A biggie. Didn't we, happen. We were supposed to? Yep. There was a super high uh, likelihood. Why? Uh, predicted Some models. shit. I have been told that the big one has been coming forever. I don't... There is no earthquake prediction. Definitely in the next 35 to 170 years. Earthquake predictive models are very... Uh, generalized and not even anywhere near as good so as why would anyone say an earthquake's gonna happen this weekend um that's because of some imminent shit that's, that's the data that their predictive models spit out some what's the who has happened uh jigger gd that that sounds like nonsense uh, the weekend's not over guys look stan's dad <laughs> has a real valid career and i i don't want you to talk ill about that small joke. Oh my god, guys! Oh my god, oh no! Ah! Or had a real valid career Are you before done? he became a pot farmer. That was a weird arc. I yeah, I'm that done. That was us dying in the earthquake right Oh, there. right. Yeah, obviously. That's a good out. Thank you to our patrons on Patreon. Um, hit us up. Let us know what stuff we should make for you. It's time for us to make you more stuff. Um, thank you so much for helping us fund this podcast and our operating expenses and talking to us all the time and telling us how cool you are because you're so fucking cool feel free to record interesting conversations about burning man and send them to us d-day will edit them for you he will and it's if what you need a vulgar mask which will offend some people in your community as you go out about your quarantine shopping check out burner narc Burner. Burner. Check out burnernark.com for your fuck this shit quarantine mask. Ah, uh, fuck this shit. Uh, like and subscribe. Tell your friends. Social media. Accuracy third. Accuracy third. Bye.